Hey everybody, it's Luke over at Galaxy Tech Review, and today I've got a product from Fecker. This is the Fecker K75 Hot Swappable uh, Tri-Mode Mechanical Keyboard with a rather large uh, OLED screen that you can upload your own pictures or GIFs to and have some information in it as well. We're going to dig into this now, and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is everything that you get once you get it out of the box. Of course, you get the K75 itself, uh, and this, again, has that nice big OLED screen on here on the knob, uh, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later in the video. Uh, and this is sent over from whatgeek.com. You're going to have a link in the description below and a coupon code if you do want to check this out. Now, they do give us a user manual here. Uh, unfortunately, it's written in Chinese only. I have linked the the uh, uh, English version down below in the description, as well as the setup software in case you need to download that as well. Uh, so not much use to me because I do not speak Chinese, but some of you do, and it will help you out. Now, you do have a, a standard USB uh, Type A to USB Type C cable for plugging this in as on wired mode and recharging the 5000 milliamp battery that is inside the K75. Uh, so, the wired mode will work no problems with this. Now, it has two other modes as well a 2.4 gigahertz mode and a Bluetooth mode, uh, which you can uh, do up to three different Bluetooth devices and switch back and forth. Taking a look at the build quality on this, this is kind of a plastic deck here. Uh, you do have these nice keycaps in a, a couple of different colors, again, depending on the color that you get. And of course, you can swap these out for any of the ones that you want. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a TKL keyboard. Uh, you're not going to have uh, a number key on the right-hand side, uh, but you can take a look at the bottom here. We've got dual levelers here for the K75, uh, and you can see that if I want to pop this out at a lower level, I can. And then I can also pop this out at a higher level if I need it. So a little bit of adjustments there, having dual levelers here uh, works out really nicely, uh, depending on what angle you would like to type at. Now on the back, you're going to have an on and off switch uh, and a USB Type-C input uh, for charging the battery and connecting via USB for USB mode. Now, if you turn that on, you can switch that between 2.4 gigahertz a dongle mode, or you can also switch it between Bluetooth mode, which we'll get into in a little bit. Now, underneath this magnetic door here is your 2.4 gigahertz a dongle, uh, and it does have a little magnet there that holds it on and holds it in place and keeps it out of the way. Uh, it's not a bad solution. It would have probably been better just to, uh, you know, go directly into uh, the side if they could have. Uh, that would have been fine, uh, but it works just the same uh, and doesn't have any issues. So overall, the, it feels lightweight enough. It's not a brick uh, as far as the weight goes, uh, and it feels nicely constructed overall. So that's the unboxing of the Fecker K75. Let's move on to uh, switches and other things. Okay, so the K75 comes with uh, RGB, uh, south-facing RGB, uh, Corgi linear switches directly from Fecker, pre-lubed from the factory. And you can see here with the keycaps, they are OEM style uh, PBT keycaps. So you can switch these out uh, for other keycaps if you would wish. And you can also switch out the uh, switches with other ones uh, if you wish as well, of course. Now these are linear switches. So that you're going to see on the bottom here uh, that these are three pin switches, uh, but you can uh, do uh, switch these out with five pin switches as well. They are, uh, since they're linear, a little bit on the quiet side. Let's take a listen.
Now, the, one of the stars of this keyboard is this 1.28 inch customizable display. It's a round display here. Uh, you get your time, your date, uh, your weather on the left in Celsius, and on the right is going to be your CPU usage. Uh, so you have those uh, inf that information here, uh, and you have this on a, a pretty decent display. Now, on my uh, under my LED lights, it looks a little bit washed out, but in person, it's very vibrant, as you can kind of see here. Uh, so you can uh, rotate through these with the function and the knob itself. Uh, will take you to this screen where you can adjust the color, uh, whether you want this for Windows or Mac, uh, your brightness, uh, your speed of your animations, and all of those things are right here. Uh, so I can adjust these uh, using the knob feature, uh, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I can also check uh, my connections, either my three Bluetooth connections, 2.4 gigahertz, or of course wired, uh, and of course the speed and direction of my uh, animations as far as my RGB goes. Uh, so it's got some interesting things here. Now you can also, via the software, upload your own pictures or animated GIFs uh, to uh, sit there on the screen. Now unfortunately, uh, as at the time of this review, uh, the writing is still in Chinese. They do not have a language selection to put this in English or other languages, uh, but hopefully with a firmware upgrade, they will be able to do so. Now let's take a look at some of our modes here using function and backslash. We can switch through modes right on the keyboard and of course we can do it through the software as well which I will also show you here in just a moment. Uh, but function and backslash will get you through all of your modes that you have uh, available to you and I'm just kind of cycling through some of the modes uh, so that you get a good idea of how this works. Uh, but you can see here, once you find a mode that you like, you can also adjust the brightness with the arrow keys with function up and down. Uh, down will, of course, uh, reduce your brightness until it's all the way off. Uh, up will increase it, and you have uh, four different steps there. Same goes for right and left. If I want to increase or decrease the animation speed, I can do that using the function left arrow key and right arrow key. Now function backspace will cycle between solid colors. So if I just want a solid color here, uh, say a blue, this blue color, I can do that with function and backspace. Now function and enter will automatically turn off all the LEDs. Uh, so if you want to quickly turn them all off, you can do that as well. Now, when you're in wired mode, you can use a function and spacebar. So let's unplug this from USB, turn it on into wireless mode. Uh, and what this will do uh, is allow me to connect uh, to a uh, up to three different Bluetooth devices, or uh, I can check my battery level as well uh, with this once we're connected up. So uh, holding down function one, two, or three will uh, set us up for our uh, Bluetooth devices, either one, two, or three. And you can see that we're blinking in pairing mode, uh, ready to be set up and paired to a Bluetooth device. And function four will put us in a setup for uh, the, US, uh, the USB 2.4 gigahertz dongle. So that's how you switch between modes on this in wireless mode. Okay, so in the Fecker software that you can download, again, I'll have a link to that in the description below where you can download that or you can get it directly at whatgeek.com as well. Uh, you can see we've got uh, a per key assignment here. Uh, we've got three different layers that we can use uh, and we can adjust this per key uh, to any key we want to, a key combination, a macro, uh, a, a media key, uh, and we have some other settings as well as our key sensitivity, uh, the timeout for your 4.8 gigahertz uh, sleep mode and lights off for Bluetooth and for 2.4 gigahertz as well can be adjusted here. Now we also have our function layer. So if we have, a, a, you want to do this on the function layer itself, you can also add the same things that you have 
for your regular layers. Now we do have a full macro uh, creator here. So this is where you can create all your macros and link them to individual keys. If you would like to do that, you can easily do that here. Now in screen, we can upload our own GIF. So I have an Alice in Wonderland GIF here, and I'm gonna upload that to uh, my uh, device and we'll see how that actually looks. You can see right here that we can upload the animation. We have other settings as well, uh, or you can select your own pictures or even create and draw your own pictures as well. So this is really cool to have on that larger uh, LCD screen, uh, and we're gonna upload that so that you can see it right now. And here it is uploaded on to the device. And as you can see here, no problems whatsoever playing this animated GIF back. You can also do static pictures as well. Uh, with my overhead LED lights, it looks a little bit grainy, but in real life, you don't notice that at all. Uh, and it looks really good on this particular screen. Back in the software, we have other settings, and this is going to be synchronizing the time. Uh, you can synchronize uh, the system information as well, uh, and you can set your weather information uh, like you saw on the default screen. Now under uh, lights, uh, we can cycle through any of the lights that we want in the modes. We can also adjust the brightness, uh, and if you select one uh, that you like to have uh, a direction on, uh, you can change the direction as well. So if we select this one, we can do uh, top to bottom or uh, bottom to top, or right to left or left to right. And we can also change the color right here as well for each individual light mode. Uh, so uh, my current is RGB or Dazzle, but we can select any one that we would like. So this is really nice to uh, just customize this as you would like to. Now, if we go to share here, this is where people have shared uh, their light setups uh, and they can also, uh, you know, you can download these if you would like to, and animation's the same thing. So if I wanna download an animation, I can search through this list, find one that I like, and then I can download it straight to my device. So that's pretty cool as well. Uh, so being able to download or upload this right to my device, right through here is really nice. You also have settings uh, that you can share and you can also share macros as well. So if you have a macro set up uh, that you would like to share with people, you can do that as well. And you can do all that under my account. You sign up or an account for them. And you can also back up your settings and restore your backup right from here. You can also go to my about page here. And when you go to the about page, you have the app version, you can check for an update and you can check for an update for the firmware as well. Uh, so you've got all of that set up right here. Overall, a pretty nice setup. You have a reset button here to totally reset everything, and you can switch between your layers, uh, configurations right here, or add new ones. Uh, and it's a pretty solid software that works pretty well. Hopefully, they will add uh, language changes to the button in the future. That would be one of the things that I would like to see. So there you go. That's my review of the Fecker K75. Now this is a great 75% keyboard that's going to save some space on your desk and really has that uh, nice uh, display on the knob that you can customize, uh, which is really cool. It's got some very uh, useful information on it that works as well. Uh, again, I would like to see them in a uh, further update uh, allow us to change that from just Chinese to maybe English or a few other languages as well. That would be a nice addition. But other than that, it works really well uh, as a volume knob and a pause and play, uh, but then having that function to be able to go in and change all of the things, including your lighting and everything else right from uh, the knob itself. So it works out really well. Uh, overall, I think Fecker has a nice keyboard on their hands here, and uh, you can, again, pick this up at whatgeek.com. I'll have an affiliate link in the description below where you can check it out. Uh, it will help out the channel, and you can also use code RICHARD10 uh, to save 10% off anything on uh, whatgeek.com as well. This was Luke from Galaxy Tech Review. I hope you enjoyed my review, and I'll check you guys out on the next one.